church jobs uh, come in very handy, you know. They've not got a lot of money, like, but, you know, it makes a break from slogging your guts out up top of a big factory chimney. Um, my first big break on steeplejacking came on the church, you know, like the cannon of Bolton, like he took a shine to me sort of thing and entrusted me to mend his church tower. And like, I never looked back after that as far as vicars were concerned. Some of these vicars are, uh, you know, getting a bit of an off sometimes, <laughs> like, like, where are you, when are you going to come? Uh, you know, you've had the job for 18 months, sort of thing, and well, it, it doesn't work that way. I mean, they're, they're speaking from the comfort and warmth of the vestry or the, uh, you know, the vicarage, and don't seem to realise, like, it rains and it snows and blows and, and you can't get on with the damn thing. It looks very safe to me, this. Quite a lot of them say, uh, send you letters, you know, uh, Dear Mr. Dibner, like, you know, if, if you feel as though you can't get round to doing our job, you know, we'll get somebody else, like, sort of thing. But nearly always, they end up, you know, with a bit of a clangor, uh, you know, I, I think they'd be better waiting and biding the time a bit, you know. Um, I mean, what's the point if your church spire's been raining in for 20 years, and because the pigeon muck's built up so much in the bell room and blocked all the bloody holes up where the water runs out, nobody's ever bothered shoveling that up, like, uh, they think it's just started. And really, the rot's been in for donkey's years, but nobody's ever bothered, you know. Uh, and so, you know, they, they seem to think, like, you're there at home with your hammer in your hand and all your ladders just waiting for them to bring you up. Right, now, now we're here, we'll, you know, finish the job and make them happy and, uh, you know, prepare for the phone ringing from some other irate vicar somewhere else. Some big gaping nicks that shipping gallons of water. All that cast iron, it's not so safe. I don't really like being here. <laughs> this big iron ring around this clock face is uh, rather loose, you know. It, it sort of really, it's only poverty and rust that's holding the damn thing up here, you know. And, uh, it could very easily turn like a wedding into a funeral, you know, or the, if it didn't, the bride would end up with two rings, like, you know, <laughs> wedding ring and a big cast iron. There's a bit of slack, Donald. Things are bad. That bloody clock face, I could pull it off if I wanted. Yeah. You know these things? There's some big nicks, you know. Uh, no wonder it's raining in. It's right over the door. Yeah, but all that there. big load of cast iron, you know, I can shake it about, you know. Uh, so there's some that should right be done with that, yeah. Uh, well, it's like a lot of copper hooks making them up yeah, about. 18 inch centers all the way around it. And then it'll, at least it won't drop down and kill nobody, will it? You know, uh, which that's what could happen at present. Oh, better tell them the bad news. Eh? I wonder if they've any money.